In which schools are the biggest offenders, so to speak? Well, I'll, I'll name a few. Harvard, Stanford, NYU, they're all up there. But, Deirdre, really just think prestigious schools in metro areas. Now, by one estimate, 15 to 20 percent of higher ed executive contracts on average have exit bonuses or what's called super severance, often equal to one to three times their average, their annual salary and bonus. Now, this was recently brought to light during Treasury Secretary Jack Lew's confirmation hearing. He had to disclose that he got a $685,000 bonus when he left NYU, as well as $1.5 million in housing loans from the school, a third of which were forgiven. Now, Senator Charles Grassley had some tough questions about that during his confirmation hearings. He said he was distressed at Lou's inability to recall the perks, but executive search firms, Deirdre, say that this is really becoming common practice. Millions of dollars in super severance as universities compete for increasingly savvy chief investment officers and university presidents. They're moving among uh, schools. They deal with people on Wall Street. They deal with people in show business. They deal with people in professional sports because of the, uh, the uh, big time uh, athletic programs. So the, the information about salary compensation levels uh, moves at the speed of light. That was Charles Scarina speaking there. Now, at the same time, Deirdre, you mentioned it, we're seeing tuition topping $60,000 a year at a lot of these private schools. Students, of course, holding a trillion dollars in loans. And Deirdre. Megan, we know it's not just about cash. What are some of the other perks? Well, real estate is a huge one. I mean, look at the schools that we're talking about. You've got Harvard near Boston, Stanford near Palo Alto, California, NYU and Greenwich Village. So a lot of these schools are in very, very expensive areas to live. Now, at those schools, some administrators get both low interest home loans and what's called shared appreciation mortgages. So the loans cover a portion of the purchase price. They don't have a monthly payment or set interest. And the university gets a share in any gain of the if the property is sold. Now, some administrators also get deals for their children's education costs. At Harvard, for example, faculty can take out no interest education loans. Harvard, by the way, their eight professors there owe $2.8 million in loans in 2010. All right. And Megan, just in general here, I mean, if schools need to retain talent by offering the perks, and that's part of the argument, and as somebody that you spoke to there clearly outlined it, that's pretty much commensurate with almost any other field, what is the problem? Well, uh, critics, including Senator Grassley, as I mentioned, say that it really shows that these schools are out of touch, that there's uh, always going to be more money for the executive suite at the same time that tuition's going up at these schools. Now, defenders, as you mentioned, they say you need to, not only is it competition, but you also need to take into account what kind of fundraiser you're bringing into the school. So those sorts of contributions can actually help manage tuition. So they argue that it's an investment.